Bangladesh isn't just a Muslim country. It's a Muslim majority country that has many, many minorities. Uh, and there isn't a minority in the country that doesn't feel under threat right now. Muhammad Yunus is failing. Okay, that's what's happening in Bangladesh now. This is un unbelievable. And I, I have to tell you, I was astonished by the response of, of Mr. Yunus and the Bangladeshi uh, government. And it is the first responsibility of any government to protect these people. Muhammad Yunus is failing. That's what's happening. And he better fix it right away. We cannot have a country overtaken by terrorists or communists or other, other interests uh, which would be a threat not only to the Bangladeshi people, to Southeast Asia, but to the entire world. Muhammad Yunus is facing the harsh realities of Bangladesh, violent street violence and frightened minorities. It's such a sad topic. Explain to our viewers what is happening in Dhaka and other parts of Bangladesh. Uh, and who is really behind this violence? What is your assessment? Well, look, uh, Bangladesh isn't just a Muslim country. It's a Muslim majority country that has many, many minorities. Uh, and there isn't a minority in the country that doesn't feel under threat right now. I mean, that's been uh, globally evident uh, in recent days as um, this uh, high profile uh, arrest has taken place of, uh, of, of not just not just a leader of the of the Hindu Bangladeshi community, but but really a, a, a very, very serious, serious religious figure. And I and I think the perception is if they'll go after him, they'll go after they'll go after any of us. And so I, I want to be like crystal clear, as clear as I possibly can be, that the global Christian community stands with the Hindu community in Bangladesh. <laughs> and it is the first responsibility of a government to protect those under threat. And the religious minorities of Bangladesh are really feeling it now and they deserve our support. Right. Now, the visuals and the reports that are coming out of Bangladesh show that how a Hindu priest was first arrested, then he was denied bail by the local court. Then the lawyer defending the priest was killed amid protests outside the, uh, the court where the lawyer was um, hacked to death by protesters, uh, dragging him out of his chamber. Uh, it's become a major rallying point in the country. Uh, who is really doing this and why? Well, I... I we're not sure who's who's really doing this, but let me just say the way I see it. Muhammad Yunus is failing. Okay, that's what's happening in Bangladesh now. As as the leader of the country, as the interim leader of the country, uh, there there are no aspirations for the Bangladeshi people if you can't manage a very, very simple component of civil society, which is you have to protect people. People have to be safe. And you certainly, you certainly cannot have a, a vibrant uh, democratic democratic country if uh, the opposition, if they're religious, can face this level of persecution. If there's if the if the rule of law becomes become so inefficient that instead of getting due process, a lawyer is killed. You know, I mean, this is this is this is un unbelievable. And I, I have to tell you, I was astonished by the response of of Mr. Yunus and the Bangladeshi. Uh, government, uh, they they are saying this is exaggerated. They're saying that uh, you know this isn't as big a deal as it seems. Well, I can tell you, if you're a if you're a religious minority in the country and you're wondering whether you're going to live tomorrow, it's a very very big deal, and it is the first responsibility of any government to protect these people. Muhammad Yunus is failing. That's what's happening, and he better fix it right away. Right. Now, India is one country that's voiced, uh, you know, the, the, the issues, especially what's going on uh, with the Hindus in uh, Bangladesh. Uh, you know, what role do you see um, India playing in this situation? Uh, and, uh, you know, how do you foresee what, what, what's happening in terms of India's role in this whole thing? Look, I mean, in, India is the is the largest and most important country in in the region, you know. And rather than uh, this uh, enmity that seems to be growing between Bangladesh and, and India, it should actually be the exact opposite. They can have political disagreements. That's fine. Countries have political disagreements all the time, uh, but the way this crisis is being handled is at risk of you know not only exacerbating those tensions, but denying from the Bangladeshi people all the benefits that can come for being in a in a close relationship with an economic, technological, and political powerhouse uh, that is that is the Republic, Republic of India. And so India, of course, as a, as a Hindu majority country, ought to be speaking out for this persecuted individual. 
But that can obscure the much bigger geopolitical um, parts of this, which is Bangladesh is a country that needs help. And India is a country that has uh, the incredible economic ability and, 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 and other, other components of Indian society. It could be very, very helpful to Bangladesh. But, you know, you have to talk to one another. You have to, you have to cooperate on one another. And this actually ought to be an issue that, that ought to bring them together. It ought to be very, very simple. They ought to be able to solve this problem, problem together. Instead, um, the exact opposite, the exact opposite is, is happening. Bangladesh can chart a new political path while having open hands to everything it can benefit from, from its powerhouse neighbor. Or Bangladesh can decide to do its own thing and chart a path separate from that. Uh, and then who will be aligned with Bangladesh? My concern is that those willing to help Bangladesh in its time of need, some of those have nefarious purposes uh, in mind. And what we cannot have, we cannot have a country overtaken by terrorists or communist or other other interests uh, which would be a threat not only to the bangladeshi people to southeast asia but to the entire world now the situation of this human right violation in dhaka is fluid at this point uh why is it that no one is really talking about it in the west here uh, how is it that apart from a few major human rights uh, you know no major human rights uh, organization is really making this uh, their cause and look, I believe when you're when you believe in religious freedom, you believe in religious freedom for all, or you don't believe in religious freedom at all. And human rights organizations and religious freedom organizations ought to be raising their voices every second. Right now, related to this this high profile case, unfortunately, I, I think that a lot of times the Hindu community, uh, when they are persecuted around the world, unfortunately fewer people speak up about it. Well, I'm committing to doing the ex exact opposite. As a Christian advocate for persecuted people everywhere, for my own community, but for all communities, uh, I, I am committed that every time a, a Hindu, whether they're in, in, uh, in Southeast Asia or in another country of the world, uh, when they are persecuted for their sincerely held religious, religious beliefs, I will speak up for them. And I'm calling for the world's human rights and religious freedom organizations to do the same. The eyes of the world, any of us that care about these issues, ought to be on, on Bangladesh at this very moment with regard to this case. And there are lots of reasons for that. And one of the reasons is that it, as part of this transition, when Muhammad Yunus came in as the interim uh, leader of the country, he made promises related to democracy, the rule of law, all of these values that are cherished by the West and our international institutions. And this is, this is, it's not his first test, but it's his most important test so far. Is there going to be transparency? Is there going to be the rule of law? Is there going to be a no tolerance policy for the persecution of religious minorities? Because I can tell you what happens when you don't stand up at the first opportunity, then there are plenty of other people that will create more of them. This is a moment of existential threat, not only for the minorities of Bangladesh, but for the entire country. And it is a call to advocates for human rights and religious freedom to speak up. And you can rest assured this Christian advocate will also be an advocate for the Hindu community.